Hey guys, Kaylee here and Amanda Danello. Amanda Danello. <laughs> we want to talk about deceived and delivered. And yes. what are we talking about? <laughs> what are we? No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> so um, we want to talk about Satan's deception because we both got deceived and I drifted into the New Age movement and... I was deceived by someone who claimed to be a prophet of God and she used the word of God to control me, manipulate me. So although we had two different types of deception, we both got delivered. delivered. <laughs> In so, Jesus name. Yeah, God brought us both back and I was telling her that it just reminds me that when in the Bible it says that those that are his yes. will not be snatched mm -hmm. from his hand. What does that mean? <laughs> so for those who are pursuing the Lord, seeking after him, their hearts are fully devoted to yes. him. Um, even if you stumble like we did and um, are deceived that God will bring you back out of that. An outstretched arm, he will. And we're both going to testify to that because when I was in my dark place, I thought God looked away from me. I thought that he'd abandoned me because these are some of the things that this false prophet had been telling me. Um, but the truth is, is he never took his mm -hmm. eyes off me or her during the whole yeah. time. And for me, um, I became a Christian in 2010 and for seven years, I was, my heart was all in love with God, but I did not study my Bible. And I didn't know that Jesus says, if you love me, you will follow my commandments. And I drifted away from Jesus blindly. So I was going through a hard season in my life with um, deep wounds of trauma and grief and I was looking for healing in all the wrong places. But the way that Satan worked on me is he would feed scripture and tell me, this is the way, Kaylee, come, you know, get these crystals, Kaylee. These crystals are gonna heal you or look for these signs, Kaylee. And Satan is very real, but so is God. So is yes. Jesus, right? So I started to look for all these signs and wonders and I was never, pointed or looked at my Bible um, and that that made the world of difference for me when I got delivered um, from my deception um, Satan I got drifted into the New Age movement which is basically believing that I was like God that I could heal myself and I was a Christian before so because I never studied my Bible uh, my roots did not go down deep I started to believe lies and I was confused. I started to believe that I could heal myself with hours and hours of meditation and trying to access higher consciousness um, and doing astral projection and trying hallucinogenic drugs, thinking I could have these highs to get to this point of enlightenment and everything will be healed. But you have to remember that Satan is a fallen angel and he wanted to be like God. So whenever we start to believe lies like we are God, we are our own savior, that's a lie. That's coming from Satan. And and if you believe that right now, I want to cast that down in the name of Jesus. Mm -hmm. That is a lie, friends. Um, true deliverance and true healing from anything in this world will only come from Jesus. And when you study your word, you will get to know him. Yeah, so for mine, I cried out to God in 2012 because I had overdosed on heroin um, close to 20 times. Uh, so I started with reading a little devotional every day. It was a process. So then I started going to church, and then I moved to Florida, and, and um, I, I went back into drinking. So I was half in, half out with reading my Bible um, and also still living the way the world teaches us to live. And then um, I want to say 2014, 15, I went to a pretty large church in Florida and I fully committed my life to Christ at that time, uh, meaning that I no longer drank, smoked, uh, did drugs. Um, I was 
pursuing God through reading the Bible, being around those who uh, uh, also were pursuing the Lord and His commandments, following His commandments. Um, I went on a mission trip, a couple of them. Um, but then I got to a point where I had been watching all these videos on YouTube and they were all teaching about like evangelism and how um, in order to be this great evangelist you had to have the most numbers, the most salvations. Mm -hmm. And um, I am a people person at heart. I love people and I had this new hunger and thirst to, to want to tell people about how God delivered me from this addiction. And so I thought in order to please God that I would have to um, evangelize every single day um, and people would have to be saved and that's the only way that God would be pleased with me and that I was a good Christian um, and I was watching some people in my church who were doing that and I idolized them um, but then I was also in leadership and I saw some things in this church that uh, were hypocritical and so I started mm -hmm. to look elsewhere uh, for truth but I still didn't have a in-depth understanding of the Bible so when she talks about being rooted in your word that comes with time yeah um, it doesn't just come overnight you're a new believer now now you're rooted in the word no like it comes with time and effort of applying the things you learn in the Bible so here I am um, it's about 2016-17 now, and um, I meet a lady who claims to be this prophet of God and who can hear from God, and she just used the scripture. She she's she was close to 60 uh, at the time. It didn't seem like that. It, I thought she was younger, but um, she was grooming me using the word of God. Um, and telling me that she hears from God and this is how you evangelize and she would twist the scripture just enough that it sounded like it was true but it wasn't um, and so within a couple of months uh, I had left everything and everyone to follow who I thought was a prophet of God and now mind you she was using scripture the entire time so I truly believed that this was God speaking through her to me um, and then it came to a point where she wouldn't let me eat for hours and days um, because I was putting food before God um, or she wouldn't let me sleep because I was putting sleep before God um, and then she would make me panhandle for her and do all these errands for her that <laughs> now I realize some of them were illegal but during that time she convinced me that God had told her to um, do these things for her ministry so I thought I was doing them for God um, and then it got to a point where she took the Bible away from me and so I really mm -hmm. didn't have the word to stand on um, and compare what she was saying to the word and then it got really dark from there um, so How did you get delivered? Ah, um, I got to a point where I was so confused about who God was because I like I had said in the beginning I thought God took his eyes off of me I thought he didn't love me anymore however I knew he delivered me from an addiction I knew he was real for that one reason mm -hmm. and so I cried out to him one night and I said God if this is you then I don't want to be your child anymore Wow. yeah and that's a really dark place to be um, and I didn't want to live anymore um, but then this was crazy so <laughs> <laughs> but then I had um, my last car accident, you see, when you don't eat or sleep for days, your body is naturally just going to shut off, just like if you flick a light switch. And that's exactly what happened while I was driving. I got into my fourth car accident and wow. totaled my car wow. um, because my body shut down. And um, But God used that as my deliverance 
because my dad, who I had cut off and said he wasn't spiritual enough, mm -hmm. um, he came down to Florida for one day just to buy me a brand new car. And I told him I just wanted a jalopy. Like, I would take anything. A jalopy. And, <laughs> and um, he said, no, I want my daughter to have the best. And it humbled me. Like, it opened my eyes in such a real way because... It reminded me all of a sudden, now uh, hear me very clearly, I had read the word before this happened, so I knew the story of the prodigal child. Mm -hmm. And when you read the word, it will get inside of you. So even if you get to a point like I did, where you don't know what is true and what's not, it is still there inside of you. Yeah. So during that time, um, when my dad was there, my eyes were open and I saw that this uh, prophet or false prophet, um, the fruit that she was bearing did not look like those that were in the story of the, um, the prodigal son. And so my dad had come down there to give me the best of the best, even after everything with my addiction, even after everything I told him when I cut him off. And so I, from that point on, I was trying to figure out a way, how do I get away from this lady? Um, and how do I do this without, um, I, I still had guilt, like I was running away and I was leaving her alone um, because she couldn't walk. Um, so it was about, that was, in, that was in October. And then November, December, so two months later, um, I just ran. I, I reached a point where I was just like, I've got to go. Like, I cannot be here anymore. And um, so I ran to an old friend of mine for help. And he was someone I said wasn't spiritual enough either. And so I asked him for help. And what does he do? He treats me like the good Samaritan. And <laughs> so here we are with the prodigal son. And now we're a good Samaritan. And he gives me food, shelter, clothing, safety. And these are all people I said wasn't spiritual enough. And so I'm just being humbled at this point. Like humility comes through humiliation. So, yes. oh, <laughs> um, that's so true. Yeah, and so after that, I drove back to Maryland, and my parents opened their doors up for me to just heal and get back on my feet after everything. And But in that next year, I was in the Word. I was so hungry and thirsty for truth. I didn't know what was true, so I took the time to spend alone time with God, hours with the Lord, yeah. trying to just unwind the things that she had said to me and um, like you were saying in the beginning that's like the most vital thing because the word says we have to renew our minds yes. and renew our hearts and the only way to do that is one allowing the Holy Spirit to fill you after you've accepted Jesus Christ into yes. your heart and number two, two yes. is reading the word of God so that you can know what his standards are versus the world's standards. So. Yeah, that is so important because yeah. once you accept Jesus Christ into your heart, that's only one part. You have to study the word of God and get in fellowship, but make sure you will know my disciples by the fruits they bear. That's why Jesus said, so that when you're with someone around someone, who is going to be mentoring you biblically mentoring or pouring in or fellowship with you at church make sure they're displaying the fruits of the spirit love joy peace patience kindness gentleness faithfulness goodness and self-control watch how they walk their walk with jesus and pray the holy spirit gives you spiritual discernment yeah. so that you can test their spirit and make sure it is of jesus christ um also um in the beginning, in Genesis, once the fall of man happened, the devil came to say, did God say? Did God really say? Yeah. So it's so important to be rooted in your word, which happens over time, because the devil is going to make you question the things that God said. He will give you scriptures sometimes that lure, you know, plant a seed like, oh yeah, you are the light. Jesus is the light. Jesus lives within us. So you'll get confused. And all of his 
his whole will is to take you away from the door of Jesus so you don't know um, the Father. And, the, yeah. Do you want to say anything about I do. That? I do. Okay. Um, <laughs> just because someone says the Lord Jesus is their Lord, just because someone says the name of Jesus does not mean that they are of the Lord. Um, and the Bible says for us to test every spirit, um, watch their fruit, yeah. and that's going to take time as well. Watch and see if they're consistent in what they're saying and doing um, in their walk. Um, oh, I had something else. Yeah. Oh, I did. I remember now. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> so, one of the things the Lord has really been showing me lately is in John 17, verse 3, it says, This is eternal life, mm -hmm. that you know the Father and the Son, Jesus Christ. I might have those words a little mixed up, but that's the basis of it. Eternal life is knowing the Father and yes. Jesus Christ. And even in the last days, it, the Lord will say, there are people mm -hmm. who will say, Lord, Lord, um, have we not prophesied in your name? Have we not done signs and wonders in your name? And the Lord is going to tell them, I do not know you. Depart from me. Mm -hmm. So how can two people who have been deceived and delivered continue to walk with God it is by spending time with him in his word spending time with his body and the, the body of Christ know the Lord through relationship with yes. him praying to him every single day Lord let me not be deceived let me know you and you know me yes. so that we are not deceived um, open my eyes and my ears that I may hear you clearly. Let me walk in your spirit and your truth. Let your word get inside of me and so that I, on my heart. Yeah, so that yes. I can live it out and so that I can know someone's fruit apart from what's not good fruit. Can I help me to know bad fruit versus good fruit? Yeah. Um and Yeah, and also we're called to be the bride of Christ. And so just like any relationship you have to spend intentional time with that person to get to know them. And Jesus, mm, God good. looks at the heart of a person. And so when you're hanging out with somebody, you want to listen into their heart. Listen to what they're saying. You want to check their character. The way that we learn that about Jesus is in this word. We will get to know the character of God yes. and um, his love for us. Oh my gosh, his <laughs> love, his grace, his mercy. Oh my gosh. And and I know we can testify to say that we have, we have made so many mistakes. We have, you know, fallen short so many times and stumbled in sin. But God is a merciful Amen. God. Yes, and when you repent and you say, Lord, Lord, I made so many mistakes. I'm so sorry. And you mean it in your whole heart. With all your with heart. With all your heart. Yeah. God will forgive you. And he will renew you. He will renew you in mind, body, and spirit. And just redeem your story. And we can only say that because he's done it for us. Yeah. And guys, if he did, if he did it for us, he would do it for you too. Definitely. Um, two things I want to add to that. The Lord said that um, my sheep will know my, my sheep will know my voice. Yes, but um, he summarized the Ten Commandments in two things. First, that you would love the Lord your God with all your heart, your mind, and your soul. And that 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 all word is all you are consumed with yes. the lord you are obsessed and addicted to the lord um and then the second one is you will love others as the lord has loved us yes so if you're looking at someone and they are not loving others the way the lord would love someone then well first ask the lord if they're just stumbling in their walk or That's expose great. them if they're false prophets or false yes. teachers 
Um, because sometimes we do stumble in our walk. You don't want to just judge them for, oh, they're a false prophet. No, give them, yeah, but that's have a, some mercy. That's a good point, too. <laughs> Watch how someone does stumble, how they recover from that. Ooh, yeah. Right? Mm. Do they have the grace of God upon them? Do they show conviction in their heart? And do they make their wrongs right? Do they repent? Repent. And do you mm -hmm. see a transformation of growth inside of them? Ooh, that's a good word. Yeah, that's a, that's a good one. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, let's see, anything else with deception? Um, I used to be afraid that I was going to be deceived. And just, I think it... Like we were saying, it took time to know yeah. the Lord. It takes time to know someone. It does, um, yeah. Oh, I remember what I was going to say. <laughs> Thank you, Jesus. <laughs> okay, so the Bible also says, those who love the Lord will obey his commands. Yes. Look to see oh, if they, so right? Funny. Look to see if they are obedient to the two commands we just talked about. You oh cannot follow the Lord if you're being disobedient. And like she said, if you do have a moment where you are disobedient, just see how they repent, if they repent, and are they going to change their ways. Yeah, and about that obeying the commandments, you can't know the commandments unless you're studying the Word of God. Mm. So it's all taken back. My job. <laughs> <laughs> it's all taken back to, to this Word of God. Yeah. And truly, when you walk with the Lord, He will speak to you through Scripture as you walk, every day. Um, if someone's, you know, in conflict with you, he's going to say, hey, wait, we don't fight against flesh and blood, but enemies of the unseen world. Pray for those who persecute you, love your enemies. He's going to speak back in those times. And that's when we, if we obey to what he calls us to do, we apply that word of God to our lives. We will grow and grow to become more like Christ. Yeah. Yeah. Um, for those who want to know more of, our testimonies she has videos on her channel Kaylee Lear that describes more of that new age yeah. um, for those who are going through something like that um, which is really popular right now um, I wouldn't be able to talk to you as well as she can um, and then for those who are being deceived in churches or through the Word yeah. of God um, I wrote a book it's called a double shot of redemption I, Check that book out. <laughs> thank you. Yeah. I um, I detailed everything that I went through with this false prophet. Um, there's a lot of details, and that's why I wrote the book um, and how I overcame that. So there's two different um, areas that you guys can look into for yes. resources to help you. And we are always available. Yes. So reach out, comment. If you guys have any prayer requests, we are here for you. If you are a new believer and you're looking for a church and you're not really sure where to go or um, just need to know that it's sound doctrine, reach out to us. We'll, we'll look up that church online and we'll do some studying with you and we'll find you a good place of fellowship and a home for you. Yeah. We love you guys so love much. Love you. Thank you for Thank listening. You. God bless. <laughs>